comment. Mr. Davies. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to briefly review uh, a bit of the record. Um, on February 17th, um, the Chair, you, you were talking, I'm going to quote from the meeting on February 17th. You said, on another issue, I agree with Mr. Davies on Indigenous health. It's come up from some members in talking to me. I haven't had any direction at all from the Minister. By the way, I've not had one ounce of direction from the Minister on this, and I'm pleased that we haven't. Eventually we will have because there will be legislation and hopefully she'll come here and make a presentation and tell us her direction. But nobody is trying to direct this committee. We're on our own and I hope we stay that way. I appreciate that. I did talk to the Minister of Indigenous and Northern Affairs because the Aboriginal issue had come up and I wondered if it would be a problem for her if we did this. She said, quote, no, I'd love you to do a study on Aboriginal health, end quote. Just to let you know, she said that to me and I was very pleased to hear it. Um, that was February 17, 2016. On February 22nd, uh, 2016, our subcommittee met and that's where we prioritized some issues. And we came back with five issues and those five issues included um, pharmacare, it included um, antimicrobial resistance, it included community care, and there was uh, one other issue on blood supply. We've done all of them except for home care and, and Aboriginal health. On Mar March 7th, this committee, 2016, adopted the subcommittee's report formally adopting those five priorities. So there's no question that this committee has already adopted um, um, you know, those priorities as we set forth. Um, now the question um, that you raise about whether we can or should do this report, uh, undertake this study, I think as you've long stated and very correctly, Mr. Chair, these committees, we're masters of our own affairs. We don't take direction from anybody. Uh, not the minister, not other committees. Now, uh, so there's nothing that prevents us. I think it's important for my colleagues to understand that whether any other committee is or is not studying something is not a barrier to us undertaking a study um, uh, if we want. Now, it might be instructive. Number two, I checked with um, uh, Charlie Angus, our critic, and he told me no motion has been made before Indigenous. You said you spoke to the chair of the committee, Mr. Chair. Excuse my seat, but but no mo my understanding, unless I'm mistaken, is no motion has been made before the Indigenous Affairs Committee to study Aboriginal health. We have an outstanding motion that has been here for quite a long time. Um, I wanted to um, mention one or two other things. The, uh, Mr. Oliver mentioned a couple of concerns last time. He was wondering whether or not we we were duplicating what the health what the Indigenous Affairs Committee studied up to now. I have a copy of their report, and it's breaking point the suicide crisis in Indigenous communities. So the focus of their report was on suicide. I think they did get they did look at some of the social determinants for sure around that, but it was not looking at broad health indicators of of um, Indigenous people in this country. Uh, at all. And the second concern was whether or not the federal government has jurisdiction over Indigenous people when they're not on reserve. And um, I could find the actual information, um, but my understanding and information is that absolutely the federal government retains jurisdiction over Indigenous Canadians um, wherever they are in the country. Um, so I don't think those are barriers. So that the, the final question remains, should we do it? I think I mentioned last time the average life expectancy of First Nations uh, people in Canada is five to seven years below the Canadian average. Now that is the number one health indicator, life. <coughs> number two, the rates of tuberculosis are 37 times the national average. Um, we know and uh, in terms of um, mental health issues, suicide, uh, five times higher suicide rate among Indigenous people and we know that there's um, chronic problems with um, diabetes, with obesity um, and with a range of, uh, of health issues that, that arise from living in poor housing and not having access to clean water. The Prime Minister has said that no relationship is more important to this government than that of First Nations and I would like to take him at his word on that. So. I think that as a health committee, if we're looking at studying health in this country, 
then if we don't start with the single largest group with the single biggest challenges facing their health and start to tackle, broadly speaking, what are the causes of this? What, what's the real experience that they're having? What recommendations can we make to the government to address them as the health committee? Then, uh, um, I mean, I would, I would respectfully suggest that that is the number one priority of us as a health committee, and we have many, many important issues that come up. Um, as I said last time, uh, this committee has done zero travel. We have not left Ottawa. And I don't think you can understand uh, the real health care problems in this country without actually getting into communities and experiencing it a bit. And particularly that's the case in First Nations communities. Just last meeting, we had um, uh, representatives of the health department tell us that the oral health of First Nations is, well, quite, quite honestly, it's appalling. Um, we know that studies were ordered to be done within the health department that, that looked at um, comparing services Indigenous people have in remote communities versus other non-Indigenous communities in remote communities wasn't done. And um, I was really disturbed to um, see a report today of a, a young woman who committed suicide in Attawapiskat. She was 13 years old. And leaving aside the suicide and mental health component of it, when you read the story um, of this young woman, this young girl, um, it's an absolute microcosm of everything wrong with the healthcare system and Indigenous people in this country. She lived in a house with 20 people. There was a mold problem in the house that, and she had asthma. So she, it was exacerbating her asthma. The sewage system backed up. And so they were living in this house with the smell of raw sewage, which impacted her, her health in other ways. Um, the, her, she was not able to access health care for her specific conditions, all of which led to a situation of despondency, depression, causing her to take her own life. And I don't think that story is uncommon. So um, for all those reasons, this, this committee's prioritization, the, the priority the government has given to Indigenous health, the crying need in this country to, to study, I, I, um, and, and even if, by the way, the Indigenous Affairs Committee does choose to study some aspects of health, I don't think that's a reason for us not to do it. I mean, perhaps we can even join in some ways. We could have, we could, we could coordinate our services because it's such a broad area that neither committee is going to be able to cover everything in health. And I, I'm sure the Indigenous Affairs Committee will be looking at other things, um, perhaps the legal structure, perhaps constitutional issues, uh, perhaps uh, provincial, federal, like they, they could be looking at other areas that are specifically of interest to the Indigenous Affairs Committee that we wouldn't be looking at as a health committee. So um, I'm going to ask my colleagues to support uh, my motion um, that you've already read out basically to study Indigenous health in Canada as our next major study undertaken by this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dr. Ailes. Uh, uh, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, the need for this study. Uh, I flew with Air Ambulance for 13 years, spent a lot of time going to uh, remote northern communities. I've seen the appalling conditions that, uh, you know, this population lives in and the state of their health and all the other services available to them. Uh, however, I, the, uh, what exists now, which did not exist when we first brought this up in February, was there's a new ministry to deal with uh, all of these services, uh, all, these, all encompassing, encompassing services. Um, they, uh, from chair to chair of the committees, the, uh, that, chair, that committee has expressed an interest in doing that. And I'm not saying this would be a barrier to it, but it may be an unnecessary, unnecessary duplication of services. Should their study uh, start, and it turns out that there's something that they are uh, unable to do or find that it would be best suited uh, to, uh, for us to do this, then we could uh, revisit this topic. But right now, uh, I think given that uh, what has been stated uh, from the chair of the Indigenous Affairs uh, Committee, that this is the most appropriate committee, that the Indigenous Affairs uh, Committee is the most appropriate uh, committee to study this. Mr. Davies. Now, I, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I stand to be corrected by, by Mr. Chair or the clerk, but the new ministry that is headed by 
uh, Dr. Philpot, which is handling the uh, that part of the, the, the health aspect of the Indigenous affairs. I, under, I don't think there's a ministry there, and I don't think there's a committee. Um, so, so, um, as, and as far as I know, Health Canada, and maybe the analysts can help us out with this. Health Canada is still responsible for the delivery of health care to Indigenous people. Now, and, and if, if it's not Health Canada, where has it gone? Um, because I don't think there's another department, and I don't think there's another parliamentary committee. Um, so can someone help me ex understand that aspect? I can't help you. I just, I, first of all, I haven't talked to anybody except a co-chair who's my seatmate. And, um, uh, and I take, I'm really proud of our committee that we do determine our own agenda. And I don't, nobody's talked to me or I haven't talked to anybody other than the chair of the other committee. But, uh, you know, those are good questions. And, uh, and but I do, I, you know, Mr. Kennedy just wouldn't ask a, answer a question on Indigenous health care because he said that's now in the, in the Indigenous pro, or, uh, portfolio. I mean, he just did that a minute ago. He wouldn't answer the question. So I don't know. I can't answer the question. Yeah, but it was, if I, if I just might, Mr. Chair, um, it was unclear to me. I, first of all, one answer by a bureaucrat to one question yeah. should not be enough to derail our, our committee. I mean, I was unclear what... Um, where that he, he was deflecting a, a question to some other department, but I'm not quite sure. But I'm pretty sure that health care for Indigenous people in this country has not been now um, delegated to the Ministry of Indigenous Affairs. I know there's been a split in terms of services, and uh, in fact, I'm not even quite sure what this split is in the in the, new, in the government's Indigenous Affairs, but. But I don't think that health care has been taken away from, from Health Canada. It, I'm with Dr. Elson on this. I do think a study should be done, whether it's us or the other committee. But here's what, here's what the minister said in her opening statement. I underlined it when she read it. She said, significant funding associated with Indigenous programming included in these supplementary estimates will now fall under the purview of Minister Philpott. So these are health dollars under the minister. I, this will be my last, and I'm only finishing this, I realize there's other people to talk, but I just want to, because it's on the same point, Mr. Chair. Yes, but th that may be, but Dr. Philpott is not the minister to whom the, Indi in, in, to whom in the Indigenous Affairs Committee reports, I don't think, and she has no ministry or department, so it's a bit of a fuzzy area there. Mr. McKinnon. Uh, I was just going to comment that I, when I heard the minister or the deputy minister say was that an order in council had been um, signed or a memorandum that did in fact transfer this over to this uh, other new ministry, and it is my understanding that 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 the indigenous affairs indigenous affairs committee will be um, will be uh, responsible for for well it doesn't report to to minister of course the minister reports if anything to the committee but. But it will be related to to that new ministry. Uh, I'm very comfortable with what Dr. Elson said. Uh, you know the priorities you mentioned from back in February of 2016. I wasn't here at the time, um, but the terrain has shifted since then. We have a new ministry. I'm very comfortable with with giving them the uh, the lead on this and let and seeing where they take it. I agree that it's an important study, but I will I will be supporting Dr. Or, um, I'll be voting against the motion. So. I oh, have seeing no other uh, voices. We'll call a vote, Mr. Davies. I, I, I don't want to put the analysts on the spot, but do they know? Like, can you can you give us some information about where the responsibility for Indigenous health follow, falls now from a departmental point of view? So I haven't seen anything on the government website in terms of a specific announcement, but in media reports, they did say that FNIB, the First Nations and Inuit Health Branch, has been transferred from Health Canada to the new ministry. Okay. Okay. All, all in favor of Mr. Davies' motion, show of hands. All in favor? All opposed? Motion defeated. So with that, I'm going to conclude our meeting, if that, unless there's other business. Seeing